everybody. I'm here with Ashlyn Lucaroni in order to celebrate International Mother Language Day. Hi, Ashlyn. How Hi, are you? how are you doing? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um, Ashlyn, could you tell us a little bit about your language story? Um, which languages did you speak growing up and why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was born in Italy and I would say chronologically Italian was my first language. Um, my mom is Irish and my dad is Italian and you know from what they've told me language acquisition wise probably you know when I was a baby or starting to speak I was more comfortable in Italian because that's the um, environment that I was in um, but then we always spoke English as a family language so that's probably familiar to anyone who's uh, listening in on this so my parents tried to speak English at home and obviously the rest of the outside world that we would engage with was in Italian um, and so I was always bilingual but if we're being you know what was your first language which was sorry what you asked like chronologically Italian was my first language um, and now I would say as an adult I'm more comfortable in English even though I would also yeah, say uh, bilingual. So I moved then, I moved, we moved as a family uh, when I was seven, nearly eight years old, to Ireland and obviously changed into a, a primarily English speaking environment. Um, my mom's a teacher, so I had gone to an Italian language school for um, when I was very young and play school and everything. And then from when I was five, so for two years, went to an English language school. So I was quite used to both. I was very comfortable in both Italian speaking and English speaking environments. And obviously by eight years old, um, a lot has gone in, <laughs> let's say. Um, then moving to sort of the next portion of my life, that was probably the time that I spoke the least Italian, I would say, in my life the next 10 to 15 years throughout my schooling. As I said, so I'm the oldest, I have a younger brother and sister, and my parents, because we lived in Italy, I think, had really tried to emphasize that English was the family language, which then, when we moved to Ireland, just somewhat backfired in the sense that we were very used to speaking English to each other. Um, so of course we would speak a mix and again familiar to so many people uh here on this on this you know certain words we would never say in english and even my friends like childhood friends would know i don't know telecomando or different other other certain words but it very much mixed language family predominantly though english and my parents were a struggle i'm sure is familiar always trying to get us you know at the time it was in the 90s so we would try and like buy videos when we were in Italy or, or buy books and, and sort of they would try and encourage us to engage with Italian language content, generally speaking, but compared to now, it's just such a different time. Access was relatively Absolutely. limited or relatively um, static. So I was, uh, you know, gregarious, chatty child, used to speaking to people, but I suppose I really only spoke Italian to my dad and in within my family my parents always speak Italian to each other um, so it's still very used to hearing it but classic thing like they would speak Italian to each other turn around to us ask a question in Italian and we would respond in English mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like for most of my childhood most of my like post moving to Ireland life I just switched into sort of predominantly English mode with facility to switch into Italian whenever I wanted yeah. to, i.e. secretly getting given out to in a shop by my parents, <laughs> another classic. But yeah, I, I always had both. And tell um, me, how do you remember growing up? So for, I think it's interesting that you had the exp both experiences living in Italy mm -hmm. and knowing that you can speak English, which is an, a language that not everybody can understand in Italy. And then you moved to Ireland and it reverts. And I imagine if you were eight when you moved to Ireland, you'll have memories from having, mm -hmm. you know, you were old enough to have memories from both yeah. places. So how do you remember that? Like, as in, did you as a child feel, was that? cool was it an advantage was it fun or was the, or the other way around you didn't like it like how what did it feel like I, I can also compare um definitely thought about it a lot like it was definitely a big part 
of my life, of my identity, of struggles with my parents, discussions in my family, things other friends would remark on, you know, coming to my house. Um, but I also, like I said, because I'm the oldest, I can compare to the experience of my siblings. And I think having, um, what's the right word? Like having a very solid foundation or having even gone beyond a foundation and having sort of independently lived in an Italian, independently, again, seven-year-old child, but, you know, having lived in an Italian language context, I've just always retained a bigger facility which I didn't get into in my long spiel but I was able to switch back into um, later on in my life like so I always spoke Italian and, and certainly you know primary and secondary school I would still say yeah I spoke Italian every day like okay as um, opposed to your siblings right the, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. exactly but it wasn't as much a part of a front uh, let's say in the, in the foreground of my life um, but it was definitely a big part of my identity. Sorry to answer your question. Like, um, how did I experience it? I experienced it personally as something like quite cool or like an advantage. Like, yes, I would be embarrassed if like my dad would ask me something in the supermarket in Italian. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know, when I was a child, but compared to the more extreme reactions of my siblings who I think were more like, yeah, okay, parents let's not do this in public I was a bit more comfortable with it um, but as adults now do you and your siblings well I know they're not here to you know ideally ask them but what's the relationship with Italian right now for the three of you uh, nostalgic I would say so compared to them like we wouldn't really speak Italian to each other we pretty much always spoke English to each other um, even though we can like we could uh, and, you know, in order of age, competence in Italian is just like, is matches that. So yeah, I'd be a lot more comfortable um, in Italian than either of them, but we definitely also can. And I think as we've gotten older, which is probably also quite common, like we would all love to speak more or we kind of now a lot more freely, if you think of the um, situation I described earlier, where we would respond in English, like we'd always try and speak more Italian if we go home or if we're all having dinner we kind of naturally of course switch between the two but it's not like we're trying to before it would be more our parents making an effort and us like oh, going along with it whereas now I think it's more us trying to make an effort or trying to keep this thing that that we really appreciate um like all three of us something I think is interesting to touch on in coming to Ireland as a bilingual child is that then of course I entered the Irish school system so there was an option um, of learning Irish now at the time again it's probably a bit stricter now but in the 90s was more anything goes time so I feel like my parents could have very comfortably gotten me an exemption um, but I feel extremely lucky my mom is a primary school teacher and she really cared about it and she was just like no you'll be fine and of course, I was absolutely fine, already bilingual. You know, I came in in second class. So in some ways, that's quite an, an advanced stage of Irish learning. And I was lucky, you know, I didn't have, um, I, don't, I had very good teachers. And also I was able to speak another language. So I think conceptually it wasn't as daunting. But uh, yeah, I just seamlessly sort of went into mm. Mm. like you, sort of learning Irish and really appreciated it sorry sorry yeah no did you do uh, Irish um you did you go to like an Irish school or did you do Irish as part of the as it is uh, just as part yeah. of the normal um yeah. Color curriculum yeah, yeah um so you know whatever it is I can't remember now but one hour every day like it's a it's, yeah. a, it's mm -hmm. a base subject so quite a lot of teaching time um and I really loved I mean I love languages non-coincidentally I think but I really loved it I went to the Gaeltox then as a teenager really loved it you know I did Irish leaving cert higher level um I've continued doing maybe that's more something we want to talk about later but yeah I've continued definitely like engaging with the Irish language I wouldn't necessarily say I'm fluent but I've been to the Gaeltox as an adult um I enjoy speaking it when I can with my Irish speaking friends um you know like mm -hmm. mixing in and out. I think that's maybe the thing uh, 
having grown up bilingual, it just gives you a more flexible attitude to languages. In a way, I'm used to saying one half of a sentence in one language and the other half in another. So if I'm speaking to a fluent Irish speaker, I'm just more comfortable not finding a word, so switching in another or more I think comfortable that's been really big. Being uncomfortable, yes. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. It's just less of a, oh God, I, I don't know the exact right way to say this simply because I'm just used to it. I'm not saying it's not stressful, it's just maybe a stress, like you said, more comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's a stress that you're more used to, which then gives you a really big advantage in my opinion. Um, Again, completely subjective experience, but uh, that would be my take on it, yeah. No, you've touched already on a few, uh, what it seems you feel there are advantages from your personal story with languages, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, these being more perhaps less shy to speak a new language or to take up a new language uh, perhaps more even the fact that you uh, grew up part in Italy then moved to Ireland I suppose that gave you also the different skills in terms of being more versatile or more I don't know um, Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and can I ask you is there anything like now as an adult with your personal experience, if there were any parents currently raising their children bilingually or multilingually, passing on their mother tongue, watching this interview, is there anything that you can think you would like to, to say to them? Uh, like what, whatever words of encouragement I can give is just persist, like do it. Your children truly will. I know they're probably a pain right now. They truly will be grateful for it later. And maybe even from the other perspective, I can tell you from other people I know, etc. Like they'll really be annoyed at you for not doing it later <laughs> in many cases. Um, but yeah, you can just do it and you have so many resources now. And I think just persist, just just um, do it in a, as casual a way as possible. Maybe don't try and formalize it and, and make it a painful experience, but do always drop in the extra word or the greetings or, you know, um, those little daily things, maybe when whatever, it depends on the age of children. And I think it is a little bit easier with younger kids. Um, you're doing your teeth or whatever. Maybe that's always in Italian. You know, I think just, just small ritual things that then can expand. Um, I think just encourage, and like it can work. And I certainly feel, you know, as an adult, it's given me so many advantages, like I didn't mention, but I studied French, like, you know, and you know, continued to French in school and continued to university and studied in France and Belgium. And certainly like growing up bilingual just gave me such an advantage in formal, you know, French and Italian, not a million miles away from each other ways, but also the more subtle ways that we were discussing attitudinally, you know, like I'm still in my 30s doing language courses just because it's a love that I have. And I think if you can spark that in your kids, great, especially if you can spark it in an organic, familial way that isn't person standing in front of a blackboard giving you exercise to fill in, you know, just to show them that language is something that you live every day that is about eating together and, and how you communicate with people rather than doing grammar exercises, which even for the biggest nerd in the world like me is not inspiring, you know, necessary evil, but I think there's a lot more. And, you know, reading, writing, their bonuses, I think focus on just communicating. Again, Thank completely you so subjective much. personal opinion, but Thank you so much, Ashley, for joining us today. Thank you.